Okay, so I'm going to work out, um, well, on the video, just overview and work out a couple problems from lesson 2.6 piecewise functions. So I did number five, um, and it's made up of mainly linear functions. But one of the things that I want to focus on is the overlap. And um, you notice that negative two is an overlap, um, is the end and the um, beginning of uh, of two functions, and the one is the end in the beginning of another function. Uh, negative two is included in the second function. Okay, if I number these, <clears throat> if I number these one, two, and three. Okay, um, it's a, it it does not it's not included negative two. It's not included in the first function, but it's included in the second function. So. I have to figure out where um, that overlap is, and that cr creates this open circle right here. Okay, and so I put it in into the first function, and um, it gave me a negative two, negative two, and then um, I put an open circle there, an exaggerated open circle, um, and then I can use my slope one half, and then just count down. And then to the left because I can't go up and to the right, so I have to count down and to the left, uh, down one, left two. Okay, and then that's how I arrived um, at these other three points down here. Where's my cursor? Um, these three points right here, and then um, where negative two is included is the second function right here. I actually s solved that or. Uh, put the negative 2 into that function and then it gave me an 8 so I know that that's my starting point of the second function so I went down 3 and to the right 1 down 3 to the right 1 there is my y-intercept down 3 and to the right 1 and I know where an x equals 1 that is going to be my open circle there that's a very exaggerated open circle okay and then it's good that's another overlap where x equals 1, where um, it creates that horizontal function from the uh, function, third function that's in that piecewise function. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this one. Well, this one has a mixture of interesting functions here. So I'm going to take a look at my um, overlap. My overlapping things, I'm going to, I can make a table here. Okay, and then I'm going to put it, let's go ahead and number these functions, 1, 2, and 3. And I'm going to first put it into my exponential function, negative 2 raised um, to the fourth power. Okay, and it, notice that it doesn't have a parentheses around the negative 2, so I just have to leave it like that. So that means that, that this actually means negative 1 times 2 to the fourth. Okay, um, and so, oh, negative fourth, whoops. Negative fourth and negative fourth. Okay, so that means that it's negative one over two raised to the fourth power, one, negative one over two times two is four, four times four is 16. So that's around um, negative 0.0. .0 six two five around there okay and then um i can put in another point um let's do that's less than negative five so let's do negative five you're not going to get a really pretty function but negative five negative two raised to the negative so that's negative um one times two to the negative fifth negative 1 over 2 to the fifth, which is 1 over negative 1 over negative 32 or 32. And that is roughly around negative 0 0.03125. Okay, so I'm just going to graph those. Um, so I put a negative 4, negative 4. Okay. Um, let's see. 
negative four, and then so negative four and negative zero point zero six, so negative four and and remember that's gonna be an open circle right there because that's the overlap. Okay, that's the overlap, negative four and negative zero point six, which is very close. Okay, and then um negative five and it's even gonna be even closer. And that's a close circle. It's gonna be even close. And if I put a negative one over and these are gonna be negative one over two to the sixth power, that's even gonna be closer, even closer to zero. So what I'm noticing is some kind of business that is getting closer and closer to zero. So I'm just gonna do that, okay? Um, but it's not going to become zero because it's an exponential. That's where the asymptote is, okay? And then I'm going to put in the overlap, which is negative 4, into the second function. It's nice to have these color-coded. 1 and then 2. Uh, negative 4 into the absolute value function. And that's going to give me a 4 and a negative 4. So negative 4 and a negative 4. That's a closed circle. And um, we know that that is a square root function that has been just reflected over the x-axis. So if I put a 0 in, it's going to give me a 0. And so it's going to look like that. And there's no, it's, it's going to be from 0 to negative 4. So I see I have a closed circle and a closed circle here. And then I see my quadratic right there. Okay. And um, I'll put that as purple. Okay, I have to see the overlap, so I'm going to put a zero in, okay, and when I put a zero in, it gives me a four, zero, four, okay, that's been reflected over um, the x-axis, and then um, moved up four, okay, so it's an open circle, okay, um, and then um, you notice that the slope is negative 1, so I could just go down and to the right 1. Okay, and that's 1, and I could check myself and say 1, and that's going to be 3. 1, 2, 3, yeah. Okay, and then I could continuously plot more points. I don't have to. I'm going to put a 2 in there, and I know it's going to be a 0. 2, 0. Okay, and so there's my quadratic, and it's greater than 0. Okay, good job. Um, let's see, should I do one more? Why not? Okay, so let's go ahead and make my little table. And you don't have to make a table, okay? But you have to clearly, if you don't make a table, then you have to tell me which points it is that you use to graph this. Um, let's look at the overlap. I'm gonna use purple. Overlap is one. If I put that into the function, I get 1 minus 3. That's absolute value of negative 2. So that's 2. Okay, so that's 1, uh, comma 2. So there's my open circle. And all of the things have to be less than, so I can put a 0 in. And 0 gives me a 3. Okay. Um, my vertex is going to happen at 3, 0, okay, because it's been moved to the right 3. Okay, so it's not going to hit a vertex. So if I try a negative 1 here, it's just going to give me a linear part of that absolute value, negative 1 and 4. Okay, so I just know that these are going to have a slope of 1, just like that. Okay, now let's look at the overlap of 2, which is when x, when just x equals 1. So um, let's see, 1, that's going to be 1, 0, raised to the 4th power, that's going to be 0. So 1 and 0, it's just going to create a point. Okay, 
And then I'm going to look at my third function. Okay, and I need to look at the overlap, so I need to look at 1. And that's going to give me 1 times 4, that's going to give me a 2. So 1, and then 1, 2, okay. Interesting. Because x equals 1. So there's going to be another open circle there. And then let's put in something that's going to give me a perfect square. So I could put a 4 in. 4 times 4 is 16. 16 square root of 16 is going to be uh, 4. So 4, 4. And it's going to look like this. 6. I could put a 6 in. That's going to be 24. I don't want to mess with that. You, you. What other perfect squares? Yeah. Just make it look like a square root function. Wow. That one was so much fun. Okay, now writing piecewise functions. Um, let's see, if you take a look at the absolute value, um, what you notice is that the slopes are different. So it's really not an absolute value. You notice that um, there's a point here. I, shouldn't, I don't like to do the, there's a point here. And so if you know that that's the axis right there, then there should be a point here, but there isn't. So you know that um, you can't write an entire absolute value function for this. How I'm going to take this apart is write an equation for that function. And then I'm going to write an equation for this function or that part that piece, and then I'm going to write a equation for that. So it's going to have three different equations with three different limitations for um, restrictions on the domain. So I have f of x equals, and then one of these things. Let's do the purple because it's the easiest. Okay, um, so let's say that is negative 7. It's a horizontal line. And it's when x is greater than or equal to 2. Okay. And then let's make one for the red. Okay. Um, the red, we know the y-intercept. It's the y-intercept right there. It looks like a negative 2. Okay, 0, negative 2. And then um, find that point up there. So it's going to be up one, two, three, four, five, up five, and to the left one, two. So it's five halves. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, one, two. So that's the slope. So I'm building my, and then minus two. So it's going to be 5 halves x minus 2. Um, I need to set my restriction. So x has to be between negative 2 and 2. And remember, um, Viraj talked about the fact that this is continuous and the outputs are going to be the same regardless of which function you use because the overlap happens at the same point. So you can actually put an equal sign on x is greater than or equal to 2 um, for the purple and the pink function, okay? Because the output's going to be the same. It's not going to make it a um, not a function. It's, it's going to have the same outputs, okay? And both of the outputs um, on their overlap at 2 is going to be negative 7. Okay, so that's fine to do as long as um, you understand that it's only for these kinds of functions that the overlapping points are going to produce the same outputs. If you don't understand that, then you can put just a less than there. Okay, that was very, very um, good. It's something that I never thought of. Okay, so let's take a look at the last one. Um, we know that we have points negative 6 and negative 5. Um, and then we have points negative 2 and 3. 
Okay, so we can figure out slope is negative 5 minus 3, negative 6 plus 2. The slope of this is going to be negative 8 over uh, negative 4, which is 2. So 1, 2, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 2, 1. Okay, and so 2x, and so to figure out the y-intercept, I can put it into the slope-intercept formula. Oh, oops. I'm trying to find b. Okay, and then use a point, or I could just count up. 1, 2, 1, 1, 2, 1. It's going to be 7. At this point, I just want to check to see if my points work into that equation. So we had a negative 6 times 2, which is negative 12. I'm using this point. Negative 12, negative 12 plus 7. This won't work. Okay, negative, okay, negative 12. I'm just tired. Negative 12 plus 7, okay, equals negative 5, okay. And then um, negative 4 plus 7 should equal 3. Yep, both of those points work for that formula. Yeah, 7 plus 12. 7 plus 5 is 12. Okay, and then um, now I'm going to put the restriction. So x has to be between negative 6 equals negative 6 and greater than or <clears throat> 2. And once again, you can put the equal sign there. It doesn't matter because the outputs are going to be the same. But I think that's good. Okay, good job. Okay, number 9 in the piecewise function. Um, so I can see that that's going to be its own little piece. Um, the the vert the v is not doesn't have the same slope, so I know that. Let's go ahead and make it a different color. That right there is going to be another point. That right there is going to be. But then you see the green v. I could I can make it into one because I can see that this point and that point is just a reflection that point and that point is just going to be, I could make three. I can make a, um, uh, a two linears and one absolute value. Hey, okay, fun. Okay, so f of x equals, whoa, that's so ugly. Uh, better, but not great. Okay, so let's go ahead and tackle the absolute value first. Okay, um, the absolute value, if you notice that the a value is going to be up one and to the right one, did nothing changed. And I can check the um, four, let me see again, four. Yeah, the slope is going to be one, up one and to the right one, up one and to the left one. So the slope didn't change, it just moved right four. Uh, right to from the vertex. So the absolute value x moved right, x is complicated, and then it starts x is greater than or equal to negative 1. And it's fine if you broke that apart and made it into 2. Okay, and then um, the red function, okay. Um, the red function has the points negative 4, negative 3. I don't know how it came, became so blurry. Okay. Uh, and then negative 1 and 3. Um, and if I find slope from there, negative 3 minus 3. Mm, negative 4 plus 1. So we have negative 6 over negative 3. The slope is 2. Um, 1, 2, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 2, 1. Just checking. 
and 2x. And I just count up 1, 2, 1. It's going to be a plus 6, or is it a 5? Plus 5. And that has to be between a negative 4. And then equal to x. And once again, the outputs are going to be the same. So you could put the equal sign here. But I'm just going to use that. I'm just going to show 1, 2, and 1 there. And that's the y-intercept for that. Um, and it has to be between negative 1. Okay. Now the purple. Okay. Um, I could see that there's a point here. So I know the slope is going to be down one, down one, and to the right two. So there's my slope, negative one half x, um, down one, right two. And I know the points are negative six, negative two, and negative four, negative three. So I know my slope, so I could just Put one of those things into y equals mx plus b. m is negative one half two. Solve for b. Negative two equals two, 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 six three plus b. b equals negative five. Negative five, and that has to be where x is less than or equal to negative one. And once again, you can have the pink have equal on both. Okay, wait a second. No, 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 no. Less than negative four. Sorry. Oh gosh, I've been making videos all day. Okay, next, this one. Ooh, this is so pretty. Okay, we know it's gonna have a horizontal line, a linear, and a quadratic, okay? So f of x equals the first one, 0, it's a horizontal line, and x has to be less than negative 4. Okay, that linear function is so easy because it has a slope of 1. So x, it's just a parent function. Okay, that one was so easy. And um, it's going to be a negative 4 is less than x is greater than or equal to 0. And then the quadratic, if you go, if you look, um, no, I don't want you to, down 1 and to the left 1. So it's going to have a negative 1a value. So negative x squared, and then it moved up 4 moved up four, okay, and then you know that it's going to be x is greater than zero. I think that's it, okay? The only thing is I'll put on the key what happens when you split up the, uh, I don't want to go back because I put chapters in this, but if I split up the, um, and write it as four, four functions instead of three, all you do is just take the negative, um, yeah, you'll just take the negative um, x, it'll be x, negative x plus 2, yeah, would be the other linear function. Okay, good job.